So this is gonna be my new water barrel rack. I just got it in the mail the other day. It came in that flat box to the back on the right, about three inches thick, so it does ship in a nice thin box. So here's the new water barrel rack. I've painted it, put it all together, moved it to a new spot in the basement to make it easier to recycle the water and also to reuse the water for watering the lawn. Okay, here are my water barrels in the rack. Now the first challenge you'll notice when you have your water barrels on the side, when you choose to fill them up, since you got a hole on the top, if you stick the hose in here, this is as high as you're going to be able to fill the water on each barrel. That leaves a lot of space unoccupied by water, which defeats the purpose of using a large water barrel to store water. Now, the way you overcome that is you plumb two barrels together by linking them with this and this, and by also allowing a path for air to escape from the barrels as water fills up higher than this bunghole. Now, I've seen a couple of designs and a couple of videos where folks actually put the return air path on the back of the barrels. That seems a little odd to me because if ever you wanted to use the barrels in a vertical orientation, you would now have a hole on the bottom of your barrel. Not such a good idea. So in my design, you'll see that I'm going to put the hole on the front of the barrel kind of right up here. So I will get a lot more fill into each barrel. I won't be able to get all the way up to the top, but I'll get close enough for what I'm trying to do. The other thing that you need that hole for isn't just to allow air to escape, it's also to allow air to enter the barrels when you're getting water out of them. Otherwise a vacuum will develop within the barrels and you will not get a good flow out of your water storage. So we're going to take a break and I'm going to show you all the different plumbing components that I use to get these two barrels linked together. Here are the items that we will need for the air path. So what you see are a couple of bulkhead connectors here on the left, a T connector and then a valve as well as some tubing to connect it all. We come out of the bottom barrel through the bulkhead connector to the T. The T takes us up to the valve so we can open and close the air path to make sure we keep our barrels sealed when we're not emptying or filling them. And then also a bulkhead connector for the top barrel. These are some Liquifit quick fit connectors. They were the ones that were the smallest I could find in terms of making a hole in the barrels. They require a 15 30 seconds hole and you can see they're kind of screwed apart. The barrels are quite thick. They're, the lid is about 3 eighths of an inch thick so when you're looking for a bulkhead connector you need one that can accommodate that much width. Here are the items that we need to plumb the barrels together for the water path. I want to show you what all of them are first and then I will show you how we assemble them all together and then finally as they're all put into the barrels. The first thing along the bottom are the bung caps. These come in two types, fine threaded and coarse threaded. When I ordered my barrels, my coarse threaded caps were threaded in the center circle. My fine threaded caps were not. You need to check to make sure that your caps are threaded in the center because one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna punch out the center of the caps and thread in these little pipes into it. If not, you're going to need to purchase some new bung caps of the appropriate thread, coarse or fine, and then thread it in the center. You need the pipes to connect into those. We need some valves to isolate all our barrels and our water flow. We need some connectors for our three quarter inch inner diameter uh, tubing. We need our pipe clamps and some other miscellaneous fittings. So I'm going to rearrange all this in the table so you can see how they actually go into the barrels and then I'll assemble everything on the barrels so you can see the finished product. Here are all the fittings put together. I use threaded fittings so I didn't have to mess with gluing anything together. On the bottom, you can see I come out of the bottom bung cap into a valve down into a hose fitting. This will be the primary outflow of water. The top bung in the bottom barrel comes out, goes into tubing, goes to a T-connector from that T-connector. I go into the bottom bung of the top barrel. Again, I have another valve here. Um, 
And then out of the top bung on the top barrel, I have another valve, and this is so when the water level is higher when the bung, when I open this up to let air in, I don't spill water all over the place. Um, coming out of this T connector, I have another connector here. This will allow me to drain the top barrel before the bottom barrel without flowing through the bottom barrel. So it just gives you some options if you have a leak in some of your plumbing or if you have a leak in a barrel. This way you can choose to empty a barrel one at a time in whatever order you want or you can refill a barrel in whatever order you want. If you feel the water's gone bad or something, it, what I did is I tried to give the greatest amount of flexibility here. So now I will go back to where the barrels are. I'll put all this together, allow you to see the finished product, and then I will fill it up and let you know if and when and where I encountered any leaks or challenges. So here are the barrels all interconnected in my basement. You can see the white tube on the left hand side to help relieve vacuum, allow air to move in and out of the barrels as you fill and empty them. You also see all the various interconnects. Now some challenges you're going to incur as you're hooking this up and trying to test for leaks and remove leaks. Uh, as you fill it, uh, since the barrels are on the side, they're going to have quite a bit of water in them. When you do the bottom bung fixtures, you're going to have about 40 to 50 pounds of water in that barrel because you've got to get the water level higher than that entire bung. So what I did is fill the bottom one about a quarter of the way full so I could look to see if I was leaking anywhere. And I also filled the top one about a quarter full. That way, if and when I did have leaks on the top, I was empty, able to empty the top barrel into the bottom barrel. And then you can see I do have a hose connected to the bottom barrel that allowed me to empty out outside the house. When it comes to testing the top fixture, again, you're gonna have the barrels pretty much all the way full or as full as you're going to get them. Uh, that means the barrel is gonna weigh approximately 400 pounds and you are going to have about 50 gallons of water in that barrel. If you do have a leak, you're going to have to empty it or get it low enough so that you can get that top fixture off and tighten it down. Again, you're gonna need a place to empty your water out too. If you're doing the top barrel first and you have a leak there, you can always empty to the bottom barrel provided the bottom barrel is not totally full yet. That was one of the strategies I used. I tested the top barrel first before I did the bottom barrel and that way I didn't necessarily waste as much water. So I did the top barrel, got all that water tight, and then moved to the bottom barrel. The other thing that you can do to help you out is leave the valves closed that interconnect the barrels. That way you don't have a lot of water pressure in that clear tubing to generate leaks. So once you have it filled up, close those valves. If you need to transition water from barrel to barrel, then open them for those purposes only, but that way you don't have the continual pressure running on those hoses and on those fixtures. So this is what I put together. Uh, I may still make some modifications to it just because it, some of the stuff was harder to put together than I thought it was gonna be. And if I do that, I'll post another video showing you what changes I made to the system. So overall, I like it a lot better than having the barrels vertical. I think it's a lot easier to get water out of them so as always, thank you for watching. Hopefully this made you think. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments section. And as always, please subscribe. Thank you.